morning, everyone. If you would this morning turn to the book of Romans, chapter 1. You know, folks, anytime you read the scripture and you read in Romans, you know you're reading something pretty important. Again, it's nice to see everyone this morning. And to start with, I would like to thank all of you for your concern and your kindness for this past three weeks while we were gone. You know, your prayers, the food has meant so much for us. And we certainly appreciate each and every one of you. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we may be a small group but we are certainly a caring group. Amen. Now in Romans chapter 1, I'd like to verse, read verses 1 through 18. We start out, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received graves and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome, Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you, unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me, both you and me. Now I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hither to, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So much as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, that is, is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I call your attention to notice verse 16 again. Look at verse 16. Here the apostle says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now I'm sure none of, no one here today is ashamed of the gospel. Paul is talking about the gospel of God's grace for this dispensation. Paul makes it clear that salvation is to everyone who believes, to the Jew and the Greek. Everyone that believes. The thing is, what do we believe? Paul makes it very clear according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It is the gospel which Paul preached in which we stand. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to realize that today that Christ dying for our sins may not always be very popular. 
We also have to realize that our freedom today may not be the freedom of the future. Many today openly state that the Bible is outdated. We are so much more educated today. Some today, as I've said before, some today get educated beyond their intelligence. They seem to think their good deeds are enough, and usually they cannot be convinced otherwise. We also realize Satan is alive and well today. He is also quite busy. In Romans 1, verses 1 through 17, Paul teaches at least five principles about our gospel. We're set apart for the gospel. We are to share the gospel. We are to take a stand for the gospel. We are to show the power of the gospel for salvation. We are to live by faith. Paul clearly tells us in Titus 3, 5 that our salvation is not by works of righteousness which we have done. It's according to his mercy he saves us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Our salvation today is all by our Savior's great love for us, all by his mercy, all by that grace which continues to flow because of Calvary's cross. Again, ladies and gentlemen, let us never be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Thank you.